Hello little fish, welcome, good morning to our last assembly of this half term. I'm going to light our candle, our reminder that Jesus is the light of the world. Such a lovely promise isn't it, that there is light in our world at times like these. Children, little fish, big fish, parent fish, I just want to start our assembly by saying a huge well done. My goodness me, what a half term it has been, but we are arriving at the end of it. I know many of you will be exhausted. I know many of you will have had some real struggles during this course, course of time, but having had the unique privilege of popping into Seesaw to see all the children's learning, all I can do is say, I am in awe of everything you have achieved and all the juggling you have done. So a huge well done. A big pat on the back to all of you. Parents, if I could give you each a Golden Head Teacher sticker, I would do so. Well done. A really impressive effort of our community coming together and working together for the good of all. And it's just amazing to see what has been achieved. So a huge thank you for all your hard work. Our assembly theme continues. Our assembly theme is getting to know people who have made the world a better place through their actions. And today I am delighted to be able to share with you the story of Sir Tom Moore. Captain Sir Tom Moore, who many of you will know and you will have seen in the news last week that uh, Sir Tom died and that it's very, very sad and all of us share the sadness in that, but we also share the thanks to Sir Tom for being a hugely inspirational person to all of us. Little fish, big fish, every single one of us. What an amazing, heroic man. So with no further ado, I'm going to share this beautiful picture book with you, which is called 100 Steps. Um, I'm also going to just draw your attention to this other book, which we've also got for our school library, uh, Captain Tom Moore in the Little People Big Dreams series. So we're very fortunate to have several lovely books about Sir Tom. So here we go. Parents, what I am going to say before I begin is if you are sitting with your children, I would like you to go and make yourself a cup of tea. Maybe you can have a chocolate biscuit to go with it and just have a moment to yourself while I enjoy reading to your children for the next 10 minutes or so. <clears throat> the illustrations in this are beautiful. On a bright April morning, a 99 year old man stood outside his house and held on to his walking frame. His name was Captain Tom Moore and he had pledged to walk 100 lengths of his garden in time for his 100th birthday to raise money for the doctors and nurses risking their lives to save others. Tom took a deep breath. He knew this was not going to be easy, but he told himself one of the many important things he'd learnt during his long life. The first step is always the hardest. But unless you take that first step, you will never finish. Tom grew up in a small town in Yorkshire. His dad built houses and his mum was a teacher. Even though most boys avoided the kitchen in those days, Tom loved spending hours cooking with his mum. Enormous cakes with coloured icing, thick crusted pies and fancy three course meals. She taught him that it didn't matter who you were, you can do and be anything you want. When he wasn't in the kitchen, Tom was outside playing with his dog, Billy. They went everywhere together on adventures in the garden and exploring the town. But best of all, they loved running wild and free on the Yorkshire moors. Billy was named after Tom's favourite uncle who raced motorbikes and taught Tom how to ride. At night Tom would lie in bed remembering the roar of the engine and the feeling of freedom he felt as the wheels spun beneath him. One day, he said, I will have a motorbike of my own. Tom worked hard at school, 
<clears throat> in lessons he was quiet and well behaved and he got on with his teachers and his classmates. But he wasn't above bending the rules. When he was 12, Tom bought his first motorbike and he rode it everywhere he could. He would even hide it in the school grounds so that he could look at it at lunchtime. And Tom's motorbike wasn't the only thing he would sneak into school. I hope you can see that. <laughs> what a rascal! Please don't start thinking about bringing your pets to school, folks. As Tom grew older, he spent more and more time riding his motorbike. He and Billy would spend whole days racing across the moors, grinning ear to ear as the wind whipped through their hair and the sun bounced brightly off the motorbike. Every day can be an adventure. In 1939, when Tom was 19, war was declared. It was a worrying time, but Tom wanted to serve his country, and so the next year he signed up as an officer in the army. Seagulls wheeled overhead as he waved goodbye to his family to go off away to fight. Tom's ship was bound for a country called Burma in South East Asia. It made many stops along the way, from the bustling, dusty harbour in Freetown to the capital city of Sierra Leone. Sorry which is the capital city of Sierra Leone, to the awe-inspiring Table Mountain in Cape Town, South Africa. It took many weeks to reach Burma and Tom would never forget the people he met or the incredible things he saw throughout his journey. Life in Burma took some getting used to, especially the enormous bugs and creepy crawlies that lived in the jungle, including a spider as big as Tom's hand. Tom made use of his love of engines and his talent for fixing things by teaching the troops how to ride and fix motorbikes, and then tanks. War could be scary, and Tom missed his family very much, but he and his new friends made sure to have fun too. They would take holidays around the country, and even travel to try to see Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. But it was cloudy, so all they could see was fog. And on special occasions there were parties and concerts. Once the famous singer Vera Lynn made the long journey from Britain to visit the troops and to sing for them. Tom could hardly believe that he was seeing her with his very own eyes. One of the songs that Vera Lynn was so famous for singing was a song that started with the words, I know we'll meet again some sunny day. So, even though Tom, along with the rest of the world, was pleased when the war finally ended and he could go home, he missed his friends and the amazing sights that he'd seen. Day after day, Tom worked with his dad building, his, building houses, and at night he dreamed of the adventures he used to have. Tom wasn't ready yet to give up on adventure, though, and he rediscovered the wonderful feeling of freedom that he'd always found riding motorbikes. He he started to race in events called time trials and he won race after race after race. Tom knew then that even when the sky seems full of dark grey clouds, the sun will always shine again. And the greatest adventure of Tom's life began when he met Pamela. He thought she was the most beautiful person he'd ever seen and made excuses to travel the great distance between their hometowns to see her. Before long, they fell deeply in love. After Tom and Pamela got married, they had two little girls, Lucy and Hannah. They taught the girls about cooking and about fixing engines. Hannah was the smallest, so her job was always to change the oil in the car. Tom had never forgotten the lesson his mother had taught him. No matter who you are, you can do and be anything you want. As the years went by, Tom and Pamela's family grew and grew and grew. Lucy and Hannah had children of their own, and there were always new dogs. Over the years, Tom made sure that his family had lots of adventures, and their days were filled with laughter and mischief. And the dogs made more mischief than anyone. But sadly, when Pamela was 63 years old, she got poorly, and eight years later, she passed away. Without Pamela, Tom was very, very sad.
but he surrounded himself with his family and they helped him to find happy days again. In fact, these years were the happiest of his life so far. His family showed Tom that at the end of the storm, there is a golden sky. They certainly kept him busy fixing things. He kept an eye on the garden, even though things didn't always go according to plan. And he made sure to go off for the odd adventure. Like travelling to Everest so that he could finally see it with his own eyes. It was a very long journey for a 90 year old and Tom could hardly believe it when he saw Everest at last. The mountain rising, bold and majestic ahead of him. It took his breath away. It's never too late for one more adventure. So, when a dangerous disease swept around the world, Tom knew that he had to do something to help others, just as his family had helped him. Together, they had an idea. And the idea was to raise money by walking 100 lengths of his garden in time for his 100th birthday. Every day Tom went out into the garden and slowly but surely walked step after step after step. And before he knew it, the world was watching him because one step has the power to inspire 100 more. Tom could not believe how many cards arrived for his 100th birthday. As he read the outpourings of love and admiration, he thought about all the people who had written to him and what he would like to say in reply. And this is what he said. For all those finding it difficult, the sun will shine on you again and the clouds will go away. Remember that tomorrow will be a good day. What an inspiring way to finish a story. I'm just going to read those words again. For all those finding it difficult, the sun will shine on you again and the clouds will go away. Remember that tomorrow will be a good day. So Captain Tom Moore meant a tremendous amount to all of us. We hadn't had the opportunity to meet him, but watching his actions during that period of lockdown and the way in which the world responded to what he was doing was such an important reminder that each of us have the ability within us to make the world a better place to be. I know that you'll want to join me in saying thank you to, to Sir Tom Moore for showing us just what is possible. A remarkable man. Children, we're going to finish with our prayer. Father God, open my eyes to the world around me. Enable me to be inspired by others. Help me to see ways to make a difference. A kind word, a smile, an act of kindness or a helping hand. Let me make the world a better place to be. Amen. And I'm going to finish with our blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Children, I hope you have a wonderful half term break. I hope that you manage to find some joy in some simple things and we will look 
forward very, very much indeed to seeing you after half term. Take care, little fish. Stay safe. Keep washing those hands and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.